Dear audience, let me present my PhD topic, which is about uh, teledentistry tools in the diagnosis of oral lesions. I'm Esther Ruchlin, and my vision is to make a teledentistry application in the future, and my mission is to use teledentistry in the diagnosis of oral lesions in the primary dental care. Uh, in order to achieve my mission, I have the following specific goals. My first project is a meta-analysis about the investigation of the accuracy of teledentistry in the differential diagnosis of oral lesions. Uh, as a background, uh, during the last two years, uh, healthcare has had a serious uh, changing due to COVID-19 infections. However, teledentistry could help in various fields, for example, in the triaging, documentation, air checking. Uh, the main risk factors for uh, oral cancer are uh, alcohol consumption, uh, tobacco chewing, and uh, tobacco smoking. smoking. Uh, tobacco chewing, for example, beta chewing, is uh, really common in the Far East, for example, in India and Malaysia. Uh, during the lockdown, face-to-face uh, -face, uh, non-urgent uh, dental visit uh, were decreasing, as you can see with the orange columns. However, the urgent cases were st quite stagnant, which is uh, presented in uh, blue. Uh, this points to the fact that uh, non-urgent cases um, also have to be treated, and uh, telemedicine and uh, mHealth could uh, offer a decent opportunity to uh, cure them as well. Uh, to summarize it, uh, my aim is to investigate the opportunities of uh, teledentistry according to the diagnosis of uh, oral lesions. Uh, my clinical uh, question is that, is it possible to use teledentistry tools for diagnosing oral lesions? I made my systematic search and uh, I found 13 eligible articles. Uh, as my first outcome, uh, I would like to present uh, the analysis about the presence of uh, oral lesions with the standard population. Uh, here you can see that uh, in case of sensitivity and specificity, the heterogeneity is quite uh, high. Uh, this is uh, due to the fact that uh, there were sm small uh, number of articles. Uh, the sensitivity is uh, 0.92 and the specificity is 0.93. Uh, that shows that uh, with teledentistry tools we can, um, we can say if there is a presence or absence of uh, oral lesions in the population. As my main outcome, I would like to present this uh, two-dimensional analysis, uh, which is on the uh, right side. Uh, so the ellipsis means the weighted uh, articles there, and uh, also there is an arrow which points to the estimated and pooled uh, sensitivity and specificity. Uh, also the confidence uh, interval is visible and the bigger uh, interval is the predictive uh, uh, interval. As translating in it uh, to one-dimensional analysis or forest plot, um, we have this uh, analysis as well with the sensitivity of uh, 0 0.91 and the specificity of 0 0.98. Uh, it means that uh, out of 100 patients uh, that have any kind of oral lesion, uh, that have a premalignant or malignant uh, uh, lesions, with the teledentistry tools, uh, we can diagnose 91 uh, uh, lesions. Uh, so these are the true positive lesions. Uh, however, uh, the specificity shows that uh, out of 100 patients that have uh, oral lesions, which are not uh, premalignant or malignant, uh, 98 are uh, diagnosed uh, correctly as uh, true negative with the teledentistry tools. Uh, there were uh, several uh, cases or several articles where there were uh, more than one uh, examiners. So, um, in case of more examiners, we chose randomly one and we used for the main analysis. Uh, however, the statistician made another analysis, which is a sensitivity running. Uh, in this case, uh, we chose uh, the exact uh, other uh, examiner. And uh, in case of sensitivity, we got a better result with uh, 0 0.94. 
And in case of specificity with the sensitivity running, we got uh, the exact uh, same number. Uh, this uh, points to the fact that uh, uh, the results that does not depend on the examiner itself because it is uh, quite stagnant. Uh, as a summary, uh, the uh, investigation has uh, strengths and limitations. As a strengths, uh, we found high specificity and sensitivity using teledentistry tools and um, the diagnosis wa was uh, made only by uh, experts. Uh, however, as uh, limitations, uh, there were a small number of articles and also uh, quite a huge heterogeneity of the methodologies. As a conclusion, teledentistry can offer an acceptable substitu substitution for uh, for face-to-face -face, uh, visits, it is uh, cost-effective, time-effective, and helps in uh, access to care. However, further investigation is needed. Uh, as an implication for practice, uh, photo shooting protocol and also tele-examination protocol uh, has to be set, and also a technical background uh, has to be stable before making any kind of teleconsultation. As an implication for research, uh, the exclusion criteria has to be set uh, before the investigation. Also, raw data should be published in the supplementary material. Um, and also, uh, the reference standard uh, should be standardized uh, much more from changing from clinical oral examination to biopsy, because it could be more objective. And I made my uh, risk of bias assessment using the Quadas 2 tool. Uh, as my second project, uh, it is about the effect of oral healthcare prevention program for post-stroke inpatient oral hygiene. Uh, there is no such a worldwide protocol for uh, dental treatment of uh, post-stroke uh, inpatient uh, that, have, that are uh, under PMNR, and nor the dental team nor the nurses are well prepared to treat this kind of patient. So my aim is to establish or uh, to prove that uh, there is a need for an oral healthcare prevention program for the post-stroke inpatient. So my clinical question is that, is there a significant difference in oral health care uh, status in post-stroke patients if they receive oral health care prevention program? And uh, as a clinical implication, um, after uh, suffering from stroke, um, often the patients have a plegia, uh, so they cannot, um, cannot brush their teeth uh, really well, uh, that can cause tooth loss in, uh, in the future, and also they need uh, complex dental care. Uh, I made my systematic search on the 12th of February, and uh, this is the summary of my two ongoing projects. I would like to thank you for your attention with the quote, uh, there are no constraints on the human mind, no walls around the human spirit, no barriers to our prog progress except those we ourselves erect. Thank you. Congratulations to your presentation. There are two short questions. You were saying in your implication for, uh, sorry, in your conclusion, that uh, teledentistry is cost effective. Uh, did you include any cost effectiveness analysis in your meta analysis? Uh, unfortunately, there were a few articles that uh, mentions cost effectiveness, but I would like to uh, mention it in the systematic review part. Uh, I mean, in the discussion. Okay, sure. then, then it's you know you have to take care on uh, uh, including it in your conclusion if it's not uh, uh, it's not evidence or result in, in in the background of it. And I'm a, a little bit curious whether I hope it is like that, but I'm a little bit curious whether patients. Uh, accept teledentistry and uh, uh, how many of those patients who were consulted via teledentistry went to the dentist as well in person and uh, uh, there was a, another checkup? Uh, well, in these, um, in these studies or these articles, um, mainly dentists 
were making the photos and uh, they made the consultation with the um, oral medicine expert. So I had to attend uh, to, to the primary dental care and after they went to, uh, in most of the cases, they, they went to the oral medicine specialist as well. In the future, um, in my opinion, if the people are uh, well trained, then they could make photos of themselves uh, and maybe they wouldn't have to show up for the follow-ups, but for the diagnosis, for sure, um, a contact uh, visit have to be made. Very nice presentation. I just have a question about your first project. You mentioned uh, different etiologies of telemedicine used uh, in the included studies. And uh, uh, do you know if there's only uh, store and forward type of telemedicine was used in all the uh, studies included or also uh, live uh, video or uh, real time there, video? There was uh, one article um, which was uh, real time. So first they made the photos of the patient and after like in five minutes they set up a WhatsApp call. So it was uh, store and forward and also real time. Okay, thank you. Very yeah. nice. I would like to try to protect you, okay? Because, I, and I'm happy that you left this slide on because I have to disagree with Szilard because cost, it is cost effective and we may not need a prospective randomized trial to prove the obvious, okay? So uh, sending a photo from, from a mouth is, it must be cheaper than going to the dentist and doing all the workup. So I, I mean, I can take Szilard's point, but you, you may develop a decent argument in your discussion, and uh, you can still uh, quote that, that there's a high um, likelihood that it is cost effective. So, um, but this is also what Szilard said, that just to, you know, just to tailor your words. And um, just a, a malicious comment that f further research is needed, I mean, it's uh, you know, it's kind of hanging in the air. So you either point out further research is needed to do this and that, or, or uh, I wouldn't waste time on that on the conclusion slide. But I really enjoyed your presentation. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Just, uh, I would like to add just one more point for this cost effectiveness. Um, most of the studies were made in the Far East. So in this case, um, there are people from rural areas and um, it is more than 200 kilometers for, for them to, to arrive to a primary dental care. And there are some places where they have to travel more than 500 kilometers to, to just go to an oral medicine specialist. And they have to make an appointment. And after the diagnosis, then they, they need uh, further follow-ups, checkups, uh, et cetera. So it is really much more cost effective if they can just send a send a photo or they, they make a video call with, uh, with them. And uh, uh, I would like to reflect, reflect for the further research. Um, of course, further research is, uh, is needed. I believe in uh, ed every aspect of uh, medicine, uh, telemedicine and teledentistry. However, I found that uh, those articles that I was uh, using uh, did not include uh, every time proper data about, uh, about my investigation. Thank you for your presentation. I have a one question regarding biopsy. You mentioned about biopsy, and so how does it relate with this meta-analysis? And if the patient has undergone to biopsy, at the what time point they will go for the biopsy? Thank you. Uh, well, um, the diagnosis of oral lesions are really complex. Um, and the uh, oral medicine uh, specialists are uh, mainly setting up the diagnosis uh, based on clinical oral examination, which depends on their previous studies. So sometimes when they want to prove their, um, their vision about uh, diagnosis, they perform biopsy. It means that um, they remove a um, little bit of the lesion, just the... Uh, just the upper part of the of the lesion, and, and they send to to uh, uh, to the histology. Um, however, because it is in the oral cavity and it, it is it it is a mucosa, then uh, it uh, it has no any wound after that. So it is uh, much more easy than I don't know taking biopsy from um, whenever the body. 
So my suggestion is that um, every study have to include biopsy because this is more objective than only looking at the patient or looking at the photo regarding the diagnosis. Thank you.